Hello and welcome to Backstage Buzz at the Mac, where you get the inside story on the art scene right from the directors and artists of the shows, along with events hosted at the Mac. I'm Diana Martinez, and we have another great episode for you today. I will be sitting down with Lisa Dawn, star of the next show from Buffalo Theater Ensemble, Time Stands Still. Then later, we're, we'll hear from Glen Ellen native and Second City cast member, Mark Campbell, about his journey to becoming a comedian. But first, I am so happy to welcome an incredible artist to the show whose exhibition, Unite, is going to be here at the Cleve Carney Art Gallery. Fahim Majid is simply put, a renaissance man. In recent history, he has served as executive director and curator for the Southside Community Arts Center, an artist in residence with the University of Chicago's Arts and Public Life Initiative, associate director and faculty member at UIC's School of Art and Art History, solo exhibitionist at the Museum of Contemporary Art in Chicago, and founder and director of the famous Floating Museum. Now, we are pleased to say he is here at the MAC. Welcome, Fajid. Thanks for having me. Thanks Thank you. Me. Excited to be here. So I want to talk about um, not just your show coming up, but the process. Because, yeah. you know, you, you were just saying we're getting your show, Unite, here, mm -hmm. which I love the title. So let's talk about the title, Unite. Yeah. Um, Unite, um, kind of the word itself, uh, is comes from my time at the Southside Community Arts Center. Um, and um, the Southside Community Arts Center founded in the late, uh, early 40s, late 30s, as a part of the Works Projects Administration. Um, so that's a really deep history there. Um, it's one of the few art centers that transitioned from the kind of the uh, Work Projects Administration Federal Arts Program. And anyway, so I came in as an artist and over time became director and curator of that space. One of the interesting facts about that space or things about that space has this amazing art collection. And in that art collection are these works by a group named Afrocobra, uh, specifically uh, an artist named Barbara Jones Hogu. And um, they used to utilize, uh, it kind of came out of the 60s as in a moment of kind of empowerment. So it was these really beautiful images um, that often use uh, colors or Kool-Aid colors as they called them as a way of drawing people in, the colors that the people on the streets were wearing at the time. Uh, but embedded as part of the design were actually words. And one of the more prominent ones that stuck out to me was this piece called Unite and this te text Unite. And I kind of, that's always kind of settled in. So in some sort of way, the text itself references or the, the name of the show references that time period, but also talks about the political times that we're in right now. And um, it's which a little- mirror. Right, which pretty much is, yeah, the things that were potent then are potent now. And uh, it, it's a way of kind of exploring um, text-based protest kind of language mm -hmm. and how that can sometimes be uh, used, uh, whether in propaganda or whether as kind of marketing and, uh, you know, in various ways. So it's a, it's a double-edged sword in that way. Sometimes it can really strike and be deep and go into something really depth or sometimes be very surface. So tell us about the exhibit we're going to see. Uh, well, the exhibition is actually going to be, uh, I've been working on this body of work for a little over a year now. Uh, this will be the first time I've actually shown it uh, in public. Um, there have been bits and pieces of it, but uh, what you're going to be seeing is actually um, a massive uh, sculpture installation made up of uh, numerous smaller pieces that uh, are actually a, a, a residue of, uh, of the work that I've been working on um, in my process of making building materials. Um, I'm going to be building a billboard. You're building a billboard? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what kind of materials did you use? Well, uh, I have a background. I'm a sculptor uh -huh. uh, by training. Um, but um, uh, actually, I, I've been pulling kind of found material. So I've been oh. recycling two by fours. Okay. Um, and shaving them down into smaller pieces and then staining each one of those smaller pieces with Kool-Aid. Oh, wow. And then reassembling them, making large sheets of uh, OSB or particle board, which okay. is the material you see bo that sure. you board up windows with. All right. And it's kind of a, a way of talking about my neighborhood um, uh, and the spaces I see that are boarded up and kind of the politics of that, but also talking about like institution building. Mm -hmm through the production of building materials. Right. Um, and then kind of uh, painting, 
at the same time because they look like massive paintings. So I'm trying to collapse these things to make one seamless gesture as a billboard in the way you think about marketing, all those things that we talk about. So there's a lot of layers and little nuggets of things that you're going to be able to tap into, whether mm -hmm. it's just beauty, I think it looks nice, or if you really want to get kind of into the, the, the politics of what it is, or a design process. It's a very tedious, it's a very tedious process. I'm how essentially long do, building how long a painting. do you work on it, like a day, a week? Oh, it's been nonstop. Uh, I was offered the show maybe September. Uh -huh. I've been working every day since. Really? Nonstop. Yeah. Last September. Mm -hmm. yeah. And where do you work? I uh, live and work in um, South Shore, uh, okay. which is uh, in Chicago. But uh, do you have like a warehouse or a, is it in your <laughs> house or? I, uh, so I have two spaces. I, I, I show my work in Pilsen at a space called Manic Contemporary. Okay. And then I work actually in a old convent. Um, no way. <laughs> yeah, it's like kind of a kooky weird. Do you have some good spooky. spirits come in there? Yeah, spirits is the word. Um, but it's kind of a condemned convent. Uh, a condemned nuns, convent? It's like no, one, no one's in there but me and uh, a and security the, guard and a couple no of people. No way. So it's a, uh, it's, a, it's a space that I found and kind of, not converted, but I just kind of work out of that space and I'm friends with the church community. So uh, they love having me there and I love, they're my neighbors. So I kind of make it out of that space. Uh -huh. uh, and I have a couple of studio assistants that work with me and uh, it's been really great. Um, kind of really tapping into making in the way that I was trained. Yeah. That's so exciting. How long have you been teaching? Mm, how long have I been teaching? Officially teaching? Uh, being paid to teach probably uh, since 2010 or so. So do you feel that when you started teaching that it helped to inform your work or change your work or? Yeah, you know, a lot of my work actually um, um, is, is very community related. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have a kind of an engaged practice that really is not only thinking about the object, but how the object actually impacts uh, the communities, organizations, and spaces that I'm invested in. So. Um, it's not unusual for me to have lots of people involved in Good. the design of it. It's very responsive and inclusive of, of a lot of people because I want not only to make the object, but I want the object to do something impactful. Mm -hmm. And that's just uh, something I'm constantly, you know, uh, kind of navigating in my work. What's the piece you're most proud of that you've done? Ooh. The piece that I'm most proud of, that's a, that's a good question. Um, I mean, it, it shifts. Right now, I'm really excited about this piece. Good. I mean, because in some sort of ways, it feels like uh, I'm pulling a lot of things together from mm -hmm. the beginnings of being a welder and a sculptor, and then thinking about the history and all the things I learned from the Southside Community Arts Center and the history of Chicago. Uh, and then also kind of this more kind of like what I call platform building of actually like building work that like incorporates other artists to come in. Um, so that one's important because it's very present. But the thing that I'm probably most important uh, is my collective, my Floyd Museum collective. And um, that's something that uh, it, it, it's, it's grand, it's large. Uh, we floated a 100-foot uh, barge down the Chicago River last summer, and um, we worked with 40 or so artists, organizations. That had a lot of press. Had a lot of press and a lot of momentum. But I'm proud about not so much the doing of the thing, but how we did it and how we're going to continue to do that. So I'm proud, uh, uh, very proud of that and how it potentially has ripple effects that are going to impact Chicago well into the future. So that's something I'm very proud of, yeah. Well, it's truly an honor to have you here with us yeah. and have your art here. And I think, um, you know, this is a really uh, important precipice in your career. Mm. And I think we've caught you, right, as you're about ready to yes. trajectory up, yes. <laughs> up, up and away. And we wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Unite will be at the MAC at the Cleve Carney Art Gallery from February 8th through April 7th. Do not miss your opportunity to see this spectacular show. For more information, visit clevecarneygallery.org. The New York Times describes Mumminchants as the granddaddy of wordless, whimsical nonsense. Come see the U.S. premiere of their show, You and Me, on March 3rd at the MAC and experience the magic. Don't miss the final film in the Max National Theater Live series. Yerma screens on March 8th at 7 p.m. Back by popular demand and selling out fast is the 1940s big band musical review, In the Mood. Get your tickets before they're gone and experience a night of swing era spectacle on March 10th. 
Get your tickets for one or more of these great events in person at the Mackinac Art Center box office or online at atthemac.org. Or you can call 630-942-4000. Buffalo Theatre Ensemble's next production, Time Stands Still, is the story of a photojournalist coping with life and relationships after she returns home from documenting the war in Iraq. Here to tell you more about it is actress and star of the production, Lisa Dawn. Welcome, Lisa. Hi, thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. So, Lisa, you open when? We open a week from today, February so, 2nd. So, when people are watching this, the show will be open. Yes. But we want to <laughs> know, right here, what's going on backstage at that at those rehearsals? Oh, backstage? I mean, we're, we're all very focused. Uh, we're having a lot of fun um, kind of exploring uh, these moments. So, every time we, we reach one level in the show, um, Connie's asking us to put, like, those other things under the surface. So, it's a very contemporary show so it's very realistic so just like we're talking right now there's stuff going on under the surface I'm panicking right now um, oh, no panic. kinda, you know you no know, but I mean there's always stuff going on under the surface when you're having a conversation with somebody right. so she's just helping us add all of those elements uh, because this is a very complicated Role. story yeah well I saw the show on Broadway okay. and I have to tell you, it was more, what, what spoke more to me when I saw Laura Linney play this role of this woman who comes back, she's injured, we should tell everybody that she's in, yes. injured, she's a photojournalist, and she kind of wants to go back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She doesn't want to stay home and mm -hmm. be a wife and get better and, no. you know, forget that life, which I think everybody's kind of pushing her to do. Right. And I felt like the whole time, the best part about it was we were in on her secret that she's not into the sky and she wants to go. Yeah. You know, I, I felt like that was, the, what wasn't being said was more the story than what was being said. Yeah, oh definitely, definitely. And she she loves James. Yeah. Uh, there's so much love between them, but it, the, the, the passion for what, for what she wants to do and what she feels is right, um, and, and really it's about telling the story for people over there that don't have the voice to tell the story and that to her is is bigger than her Herself. own life yeah, yeah. Uh, it's worth the risk and it's that important to her so yeah it's you kind of you kind of want to root for her to to have that normal life but you see this she's a very fiery she's a she's a fighter and and she feels if if she's not over there telling the stories who will right so yeah and she's got a good sense of humor. She does, yeah. She's uh, she likes to sling it at people, and and you know you kind of got to have a sense of humor, especially in the face of of what she she goes through, uh, putting herself in those tragic situations. You kind of have to keep a sense of humor. Mm -hmm. She kind of has to put some of her emotions to the side, um, so she can really look at it with a subjective eye and 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 tell that story. So. So you're a Chicago actress. Yes. And what other projects are you doing in Chicago that we should be looking out for? Um, well, right right now I'm focused on this. Uh, I one of the other things that I do is I'm also a photographer, uh, oh, which is no kind of way. Why. And this um, and the character in the show is a photographer. Yes, it spoke to me. But I do more of the happy, the like wedding, oh, okay, and newborns, family stuff. So I have a lot of that coming up, uh, which which will be a focus. But one of the other things I do is I work with the Illinois Police Department in mm -hmm. their crisis intervention training. Um, so what that is is it's a uh, it's a week-long training for them, but we come in on Thursdays and do role-play scenarios. With the police? Yes. So we play people with mental illness uh -huh. uh, in scenarios, improv-based scenarios, and they come in and, and they are to kind of communicate with us with compassion um, and try to understand um, w what's troubling us that day and, and to get us the help that we need. So it's, nice. it's really uh, training them to advocate for people with mental illness on the streets um, and getting them the help that they deserve. So it's something that's been set in motion um, for a long time, but it's becoming um, I love that they're really doing more that. needed in, in today's world. All so. over it's needed. Yes. All over it's needed. Yeah. And how did you learn how to behave? And how to act? Well, I mean, actually, well, through my first training, they, they actually had a, a schizophrenia simulator, uh, which had sounds, sights, smells. Uh, it was actually um, really interesting. But over the course of um, the, the the program, we've been able to talk with people, Good. Um, social workers, people with mental illness, and really get their stories. Um, and, you know, similar to, to telling a story and making a difference in time stand still. So. 
there's a lot of parallels with you in this character, yeah. isn't there? Yes, yeah, and it's a parallel, but so many differences too. So as I'm photographing like the happy events, Sarah is really risking her life right. with these heartbreaking events. And I'm one of those people that um, I've, I've been guilty of, of turning the page when there's a, something hard to look at. Um, and this has kind of opened my eyes to to looking um, and really finding out more and, and what we can do to make a difference. And I think that's a underlying mm -hmm. theme in the show. Well, I think the other interesting thing about that show, um, much like we have National Geographic Live photographers coming to speak on campus. We have a new series. And and before this series, I would, you know, page through National Geographic and I'm like, oh, there's a beautiful tiger. Mm -hmm. Flip the page. Mm -hmm. And you don't think about what did it take to get that picture of the tiger or what did it take to get the picture of that child who was just bombed in Iraq like your character does. Right. And and you don't think about that. You mm -hmm. you just think about you might even if you feel the empathy toward the child or the horrifying thing you're seeing, you don't think about the conditions that the photographer went through to right. get that shot and and how they're sacrificing their own health, their safety, who knows what. Right. You know, they could be arrested to get that exactly. shot exactly. and tell the story. And um, and I think it gives us a whole new perspective on these photographers. Yeah, it really does. I've researched a lot of, of the photojournalists and I mean, there's uh, they are under um, the possibility of being kidnapped and, and tortured uh, over there. And a lot of times when they are photographing some of these tragic events, uh, people want to lash out at them um, for being there as a representation right. of, of, of what's happening to them uh -huh. over there. So it's, uh, it's been really eye-opening to read about some of this stuff and, and to really understand how, how you put yourself in that position mm -hmm. because it's more important to to be there and, and, and show the world and say pay attention and right. you have to look at these things. Well, Lisa, best of luck with the run of the show. We so are much. looking forward to it. We're rooting for you. Thank you. So we will be there. Buffalo Theater Ensemble's Time Stands Still will be at the MAC in the Playhouse Theater February 1st through March 4th. Tickets can be purchased at the Mackinac Art Center box office or online at atthemac.org or you can call 630-942-4000. This spring, come see students and faculty showcase all of their hard work in one or more of the upcoming college music shows happening in March. Join us for the COD faculty recital on Thursday, March 8th at 7.30 p.m. The COD DuPage Community Jazz performs on Sunday, March 11th at 3 p.m. Then the COD DuPage Community Band takes the stage on Monday, March 12th at 7.30. Finally, see the COD Student Ensemble Concert on Thursday, March 15th at 7.30 p.m. And playing during February and March, don't miss the Max free international film series, Global Flicks. After each film, there's also a talk back led by a faculty member. All of these events are free and movies screen every Wednesday at 1.30 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. For tickets or more information, visit atthemac.org. Mark Campbell is a cast member of The Second City, and he is no stranger to Glen Ellen. I am so happy to welcome him to the show so that he can share his experience from being a hometown guy to his life as a comedian. Thanks for joining us, Mark. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Yeah. Happy to be here. So, you're a Glen Ellen guy. I'm a Glen Ellen guy. Yeah. How did the Glen Ellen guy go to the big second city? I, luckily, it's not too far away. Yeah, it's pretty close. I, yeah. You could just drive. Yeah, I did today. <laughs> um, I, uh, growing up, was just sort of always a little goofy kid, and um, the sort of situation where, where my parents were very encouraging towards it, and I uh -huh. was too shy and too nervous. And then when I got to high school, I went to Glen Bard West. Okay. Um, I joined the speech team out mm -hmm. there. Uh, per the recommendation of my brother, who uh, also was on the speech team. Did you have a college, Mr. College? Uh, he had retired at that point, oh, okay. so I had uh, Tony Crowley. All right. Who was like one of the largest influences on, on my life um, wow. by encouraging me to like stick with it. And, and I was interested mostly in the comedic events. And so he was my coach all four years. Um, so I was very lucky to have him. And I loved it. I, I thought it was a blast because I just got to like, write little goofy scenes or perform uh, little short segments of plays uh, uh -huh. with my friend. And 
it was very fun, and it was a competition, so that sort of fulfilled my dad's wish for me being athletic or winning things, because <laughs> I wasn't good at like, sports. Here, Dad, I got a trophy. <laughs> I was like, I got some medal. <laughs> um, yeah, so I uh, really enjoyed performing um, as a result of that, and then when I um, moved to college, uh, I stayed in the area. I went to North Central College okay. in Naperville, and uh, I got involved in the late night improv program there and uh, was lucky enough to work at and perform at the Comedy Shrine Theater. Sure. Uh, so Dave Sinker, again, uh, the, the owner. And, I know and him very well. He's wonderful. He's a great man. So he mentored you? Yeah, there? definitely. And and he was so kind to take a, a 17 or 18 year old kid who like emailed him uh, just asking to like sweep up after shows and he let me run the light booth and then let me take classes for free and eventually started letting me perform in shows. And so I got a, a ton of experience at a very young age. Uh, so the Comedy Shrine's been a very important place to me. So did you, you've done stand-up? Yeah, I did stand-up for a little while, um, mostly in my college years. And uh, I was doing both stand-up and improv at the same time. And just sort of enjoyed the experience of improv a little bit more. Uh, I, I still love stand-up. So then I did you audition for Second City or you took the classes? Or how did, what, did, what was your steps? Yeah, so uh, Second City is a, a ton of different class options. They have a conservatory program, which you have to audition right. to get into. And so I auditioned for that, I don't know, I think at least twice. Uh -huh. You fail a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, you do. So I, I, I auditioned for that, and, and when I eventually got accepted into that, uh, that's a, a six-level uh, program. Right. So I went through all of that, and then I went through their house ensemble program, and then I auditioned for uh, a cruise ship, Second City, uh -huh. uh, for like 12, 13 years. Had contracts with Norwegian Cruise Line. Right. So I performed on two cruise ships in the Caribbean doing comedy, which was insane. Boat, the boat shows. <laughs> the boat shows, uh, which were very fun. Uh, and then when I, I came back from doing that, I, I was hired as an understudy for the touring company, and now I'm a full-time member of the touring company, which is very exciting. To say. It's really exciting. Thank you. And next up is to get a stage. That would be your next. I, you know, well, I mean, I would never say no to anything like that. that. It's it's one of those things where you try not to have particular expectations or to or, smart. Yeah, you you just sort of. I, I personally am just trying to enjoy it because it's such a fun job. It's insane yeah. that this is my job and, and I'm very grateful and very lucky to do it. So I just want to enjoy it as much as possible. Well, it sounds like you're on the track. I'm, I, I remember uh, being in college when I was doing stand-up comedy, what I loved about that was the idea of like, you can just like travel around the country and do uh -huh. comedy. Because I went from Glen Ellen to Naperville to Chicago. I haven't gone very right. far. Um, so when I found out that Second City had a touring company, I was like, that is the coolest job in the world. So where have you been? Well, oh man, I joined, um, about, I was understudying uh, for an extended period of time in May. So I, I've only been for less than a year, but we've been all over. We, we've been to Seattle, New York City, uh, Orlando, uh, down in the Southwest, we, uh, Oklahoma City and, and Texas and uh, New Mexico. Uh, we we just came back from Michigan. We're going to Kankakee on Saturday. We just they sort of Kankakee, send us all a big <laughs> Kankakee show. Come see us. Uh, yeah, so we we get to travel all over the place, near and far, which is great. That is really great. Yeah, I love it. You know, um, a lot of people think. Um, y to me, it, uh, success is about luck and persistence. Sure. Right? Absolutely. It's the right combination of luck, persistence, and, and of course you have to have talent. But I think a lot of people don't understand how hard you have to work to get there. And it's a lot about the persistence yep. and knocking on that door. And like you said, there's a lot of failure. Absolutely. And I don't know if it's always, I used to tell actors, like, stop with the failure. You know, sometimes as a director, you need, or you know, a hammer, and sometimes you need a screwdriver. Yeah, and sometimes absolutely. you're not the screwdriver, you're right. the hammer, but when I need a hammer, we'll come back. Absolutely. And I think, um, but a lot of people get demoralized, you know, and they can't yeah. handle that. Yeah. And, and in comedy, we know um, it, it's tough when you're doing ensemble because you need the clown, you need the alpha, right. you need the political writer, you need two females. So it doesn't matter if you're the best. If there's a female role that's open, 
right? There's just yeah. not, a, you know, right well, now we need, uh, you know, a female. You right know? now we're, we're very fortunate in, in that um, s sort of those very archetypical roles are, are sort of being blended or broken down. Yeah, and uh -huh. blended a whole lot where it's not so much a matter of like, we need a female or we need someone who, who can write this particular thing. Now it's purely just a matter of like, this person is undeniably talented and, mm -hmm. and we're going we're gonna to hire them. We want to find a spot with... for them. Exactly. Um, so that's a very good thing to be happening right now. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. However, in your career, in your life, there's, you know, there's the thing you have to, I love your perspective of I'm enjoying where I am right now. Yeah. And keep working towards your craft and, and enjoy it. And I think a lot of people are always just always looking ahead. Sure. And 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 it's it's a tough balance to keep yeah. your your career propelling. Right. But how do you keep reality in balance and not make yourself nuts? Right. You know? and, and that's a conversation that I have with my dad uh, on a near daily basis <laughs> uh, because he he's very much a planner and and what's you know, the next wants, step? Yeah, wants right? to think about the next step, and I'm just this little you know, lighthearted poet boy. And I'm like, I don't know, the moment's <laughs> beautiful. Um, so I, I think that it's trying to find that balance of, of, of appreciating and enjoying the opportunity that I have right. right now while still trying to be aware of, well, in a few years, this won't, you I, know what? I won't be doing this forever. It served you well. Thank you. It served you well. Thank and you. and I really enjoyed your performance when I saw it. Now, Second City is coming back. Yes, they are. To the Mac yeah. for Valentine's Day. It's yes. a great date night. Exactly. <laughs> now, you're not in that show. No, I'm not in that particular show. Um, that'll be, there are three touring company right? casts, and I'm in one of them, and so this will be a different cast. And um, if, if it's the one that I'm, I believe that it is, they are wonderfully talented, goofy people. Well, uh, so it'll be a great show. We look forward to following your career, and thanks for coming back home and Thank talking to us. us. Love being home. All right, well, we'll see you soon, I hope. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. All Thank right. You. The Second City will be at the MAC on February 17th. Be sure to keep your eyes on at themac.org for all future Second City performances. That is all the time we have for today, but be sure to tune in next month for even more behind-the-scenes talk about upcoming shows and events. I'm Diana Martinez, and thanks for watching. We look forward to seeing you at the theater and next time on Backstage Buzz.